All right, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today we're going to talk about HTs, handheld amateur radios, and how to use them properly this time on KM6LYW Radio. All right, welcome back. Yeah, we're still getting away with the bumper music. I know you already know how to operate an HT. You've got your technician class license. You know how to program a repeater and talk to other people. Um, but there's some other best practices around how to use an HT, you know, how to be the most effective, how to really reach out to those distance re distant repeaters. Um, so just a real quick lesson on second semester physics. Um, as most of you probably know, as electricity races up a conductor, a circular magnetic field forms around that conductor, right? And it has a polarity like this. And of course, as electricity races back down the antenna, another field forms with the opposite polarity, right? So I know what you're thinking. A field is going to come out as electricity races up, and then as electricity races down, you're going to think that the magnetic field is going to collapse on itself and turn itself inside out with an opposite polarity. But for some reason that we can't possibly understand, um, instead of doing that, the, as the energy starts to race back down the wire, the magnetic field actually snaps off and shoots at the horizon at the speed of light. I'm not sure why. I think it has to do with communication needing to be faster than the speed of light and that little bit of lag there. And of course, if you break the speed of light, you crash the matrix. Um, so that's just kind of how the antenna emits uh, electromagnetic waves. All right. So let's be thinking about that uh, while we operate our HT, okay? All right, here's like a better visual representation of that magnetic field forming around our antenna here. You'll see it's like the perfect donut, okay? Uh, this would be like a quarter wave uh, ground plane antenna, kind of like this one, and uh, it, it aims at the horizons, which is what you want because that's where the repeaters are. You've got perfect uniformity there. It's not distorted or squished. Now, if I was to put some sort of metal around this, this pin or something like this around my radio, um, it's going to distort my donut. It's going to squish my donut. It, and when those electromagnetic waves snap off, they're not going to the horizon. They're either going to go in the dirt, they're going to go in the sky, anywhere where you don't want them. So you need to maintain this perfect donut at all times. And the best way to do that is to simply keep metal objects or other things away from your antenna. Heaven forbid you touch your antenna, right? Um, so I've got an example of an AI-generated person here. Um, these still creep me out, right? I don't know why these are creepy. It took me a while to find one that had five fingers on a hand here. So these are just some some don'ts here when you're actually operating your HT. So so first off, um, our person here isn't holding our HT up and down, okay? We need the HT to be straight up and down so our donut is level, okay? Uh, some of the other things here, like this X here, she's in a car. Don't operate your HT in a car. Um, if you guys know what a Faraday cage is, um, basically your car is absorbing all of those. Uh, it's like a Gaussian surface around your antenna, and it's preventing all of the radio waves from, from getting out uh, to your repeaters. It's kind of like how why microwaves, microwaves don't escape your microwave oven. There's a Gaussian surface around that. So don't transmit in your car. Uh, secondly, a lot of people aren't aware of this one. Uh, this person's wearing glasses. So let's assume they are wired glasses like these. Um, what did I say about metal being next to an antenna? Um, you got wired glasses next to, uh, uh, next to your antenna. That's going to squish your donut. You're going to have a bad time. I, I put an X next to uh, our person's hat here. I'm um, a lot of hats. Uh, this one in particular has a piece of metal in it that maintains the, the shape of the brim. Again, metal next to the antenna. It's going to squish your donut. You're going to have a bad time. So in addition to keeping metal away from your radio and holding it up straight, um, if you know where the repeater is relative to you, try and face it, okay? So if the, re if the repeater's behind me, um, uh, the radiation has to go through my head, right, to get to the repeater. Not cool. Uh, water is especially bad at absorbing radio frequency stuff. So turn around and face the repeater, holding your HT upright. If you're using a counterpoise, which I recommend, you know, this is just a little wire you kind of hook onto the base of your antenna, uh, point your counterpoise 
at the repeater, you're going to get a lot of gain in this direction and not a lot of gain um, away from the single counterpoise. And make sure it sticks out a little bit rather than just hanging down. Um, so this is this is actually a center-fed half wave rather than a end-fed quarter wave. You're going to get a lot more gain with that counterpoise. Definitely recommend this. Um, now sometimes there's situations where you want to have metal next to your antenna, and that's really what a Yagi antenna is, right? So um, these are properly spaced, properly length. Um, you know, so you can put a reflector behind your antenna and then some some directors in front of it and you get a Yagi. So you can actually use metal next to your antenna, which I know is a sin, uh, to your benefit. Um, so let's say you're putting a, an antenna in an attic. You know, there's a lot of metal stuff up there. Um, you've got your air conditioner, HVAC, and you've also got a lot of wiring up there. All of that is made out of metal. Now, I know it's not always possible to... Um, completely get out, get rid of all the metal in your attic, let's say. Uh, but what you can do is just make sure that any metal objects are at least one wavelength um, away from your antenna um, so that donut can properly form before it snaps off and shoots at the horizon. So one wavelength is what you're looking for. And so in the case of amateur radio here on the two meter band, uh, try and get any metal objects, including wire, roofing materials, all of that, uh, but at least two meters away from your antenna. That way your donut properly forms and when it snaps off, it's really shooting at the horizons with maximum power. And one other thing that isn't obvious is that uh, most radios will have an S meter. It's this little bar that goes back and forth to show your signal strength, your receive signal strength. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but what I want you to do, especially on UHF, is to walk around while the repeater is transmitting until you get the maximum signal strength and then stand there. Don't move. Uh, because if there, you can hear the repeater really well, it can probably hear your HT really well. So watch your S meter to know your exact, the best possible position you can be in to uh, transmit and get out to that repeater. So if you're still having trouble visualizing the donut here, here's another example of the donut forming around a vertical antenna. And there's an actual animation here. This shows the side of the donut and we've got electricity racing up and down the antenna and the magnetic waves snapping off into space at the speed of light. And since we're properly holding our antenna vertically, they're hitting the horizon uh, exactly where we want them. And I don't know why it makes me think of this hypnotic frog for some reason. I don't know. I can't look at that very long. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and uh, properly operating your HT above and beyond what they teach you in the technician class license. So, hey, uh, thank you patrons for uh, helping out with the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, there are gazillions of you now. I don't have a good way to scroll through this yet. I wish I did. Um, you guys are awesome. You're helping me out here, um, paying for all the stuff I managed to break in the poor experiments. Um, guys, really, this is kind of overwhelming now. Um, there's literally thousands of you guys. Um, so I know all of you, there's a lot more data mode users out there. This channel is about operating amateur radio with data modes, moving information back and forth. So I know every single one of you, uh, all of the patrons here, that's uh, Mark, Steve, Stores Keg, Andrew, Jeremy, Paul, Brian, Chris, Leo, Jim, Steve, Buddy, Brown, Robert. I know all of you have DigiPies because when you are a patron of KM6LYW Radio, you get access to the DigiPie SD card image. It's a, well, it's an SD card. You put it in a Raspberry Pi, you hook it up to a radio. I've got one here. And then you can operate your radio uh, with every data mode that we talk about on this channel with nothing more than your phone or uh, over Wi-Fi or really more specifically just a web browser. Um, so for example, I've got the Yaesu FT710 running here. This is the DigiPi uh, interface and WSJTX is running here. You can actually see it on my tablet. Yeah, it's cool. So I can operate FT8 in my easy chair. Um, but this is what it looks like with FT8 actually displaying in my browser and running on the DigiPi, which I don't know if you can see it. It's right here. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless. Hey, that's only $15. So anything in the bucket for patreon.com slash KM6LYW gets you access to the DigiPi. Um, go to digipi.org if you want more information about that and start using data modes with amateur radio. We're really trying to make data modes more accessible to everyone. You don't have to be a nerd or know a Linux command line to operate data modes. Um, so it's all the all the data modes you can think of. We've even got an APRS messaging and chat service there. We've got node services, a bulletin board. Um, there's all kinds of different radio interfaces adapter that have actually been created hardware in support of DigiPi. We've got a master's communication DRA Pi Zero. They're really cool stuff. Um, you can build a tracker. You can use a bail fang. You can do email. 
I'm not going to hash out all the cool ways you can use radios with data modes, um, but go to digipi.org if you want to learn more about it. And again, uh, all patrons of the channel get instantly get access to this SD card for Digipi. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, I know I have a lot of fun with my HT. In fact, um, it say I don't know if it saves my life, but it gets close when I'm up in the mountains and hiking. Um, this HT has really been invaluable, and it's really been, uh, helped to know how to properly operate it, um, not just program it. Uh, my name is Craig, amateur radio call sign KM6LYW. I'm in California, and I'm clear. <laughs>